Hey guys, Adam here, Cars Geo 72 in the Mobile KCE, the Car Center of Excellence. Uh, just nice day today. Thought I'd take a little drive and make a video uh, this Saturday afternoon um, about how the different suspension and chassis modifications I've done, how those impact noise, vibration, and harshness in the age. Because that's usually the question you get, which is what, you know, you've lowered your car, you've put a big sway bar, you've done whatever, how does it increase, you know, the harshness of the driving? So, um, you know, you can quantify that. Um, you know, you can do a vibration analysis or different things with instrumentation and actually put numbers to it. But in the end, I think most people just want the subjective, it rides nice kind of commentary. So uh, actually uh, a friend of mine um, that has the channel on YouTube, uh, the dad wagon, he uh, did that. I uh, actually used an app on his phone to measure uh, vibration and had me help him with it in uh, basically measuring different settings on his coilovers to look at how increasing damping increases the vibration. So that's a real thing that you can do, but we're not going to do that today. We're just going to walk through and talk about them. Um, it's kind of a fun little section of road by my house. Um, so. Uh, you know, look, I'm just going to go down the list of what I've done and kind of give you my subjective feeling of what I think it did to uh, the, the three different things, noise, vibration, harshness. So the first one's going to be the H&R Sport Springs and the Bilstein V8s because that's a big one that people do, lowering springs to use the short term for it. Um, and I think, um, you know, that's a common one people do and they always want to know what's it going to do to the ride. And Look, at the end, and anytime you modify your suspension or chassis beyond stock, it's probably going to increase NVH because your car was made to be comfortable as a street car. Um, and when you put, you know, race car parts on them or performance parts, it's going to change. So expect that any modification could increase the NVH and decrease the comfort. Um, overall, my car, you can go through some of my videos about all the stuff I've done. I drive this car every day. I don't think it's particularly harsh or too race car like, but it has more NVH than stock. So, sorry, let's get back to it. H&R Sport Springs and Bilstein V8 dampers with the Eurosport Street Camber Kit. So, I wouldn't say that increases the vibration uh, at all. Uh, it's really more of a harshness, or it doesn't really increase noise. It's a harshness issue because anytime you lower your car, effectively you're just sitting the car lower in its existing suspension travel. And so when you do that, it is going to have less bump or compression travel, and you're gonna come to the end of that travel uh, quicker. And so it's gonna be harsher. You're gonna hit bumps and it's gonna go bang if they're big enough. And that would be expected. But, you know, I don't think it's particularly egregious, um, but it is there. And I think it's something you need to be aware of. So definitely increase the harshness over some types of bumps. I'm gonna try to hit one during the video and you can hopefully kind of gather the kind of bang that it's gonna do because on the stock suspension, it wouldn't bang because you would have never run out of travel because it has more travel. Uh, so that's the best way to think about it. Lowering springs, the stiffness or the rate of the spring isn't really why your car rides more harshly. It's the fact that you're bottoming out more. Um, you remember you have a uh, you have a, a bump stop, but it's really a spring called a microcellular Johns bumper. And when you lower your car on springs, you're almost always close to it, and so you're kind of using that part of the springs travel more or the suspension travel, and that part doesn't have you know much. So this car stock might have had I don't know three inches of bump travel. You probably have an inch and a half now. I mean that's that much, and so you can imagine it doesn't take much to hit that. Uh, and they hit that bottom out and so there's actually a spot right here let's see if i'm willing to hit it all right let's go <laughs> ah, bang bottomed out my suspension on the stock car it would have still probably banged but not nearly as harsh so increase harshness with the lowering springs but nothing i would call oh my god my fillings are going to fall out uh next the the camber mount part they're the stock mounts with an insert to sit the struts a little more inboard to give you a little more negative camber on the wheels and uh, that's not going to increase any NVH because it's a stock mount. So that's a zero add, uh, all positive with those, they're great. Uh, the next ones are going to be the front and the rear sway bars. So the sway bars, the rear sway bar I did first, I, I didn't really, I wouldn't have said it increased NVH at all. Uh, it made the car handle a little differently, a little tighter in turning and things, uh, but that's it. So 
Um, this year I added a front sway bar, and I'm gonna tell you, that does increase, I'll again throw that to harshness, which is, the harshness there isn't banging over bumps, it's actually the, the kind of violent side-to-side -side swinging you get on certain road, uh, uh, certain types of uh, things on the road, certain kind of bumps and dips. And, and if you think about it, the extreme case of a sway bar is no sway bar on a Jeep rock crawler. So the, in the, the live axle sits under the chassis and can move independently of the body because it's not attached to the sway bar. Well, on race car parts, on your sport wagon or whatever you're driving, uh, what you have is the opposite where the axles, which are independent on with lower control arms, are uh, sitting under the car and the sway bar is connecting them to the car so when they move you move so you do this and so there's a perfect set of bumps up here I'm going to hit in a few minutes and uh, you'll see where it kind of shakes me back and forth uh, going into your driveway obliquely at an angle it's going to shake you that absolutely happened with the front sway bar. next thing is I did a bunch of chassis um, kind of chat or chassis mounts the uh, subframes the front and rear subframes I kind of call it just tightened them up with a dead set kit in the front and a uh, some inserts in the back and all this information in detail is in another video I posted a few days ago if you're interested um, I would say there the front dead set kits a zero add I mean it's not there's no it's not really any bushings it's just making it so it can't slide around when you lock it down after having an alignment excuse me the rear subframe inserts yeah that probably increased the buzz a little bit we're gonna call that vibration so not harshness, maybe a little bit of noise and vibration with those because they act like a dog bone uh, insert where you have a bushing with voids in it and you're filling the voids with these little metal wings on, a, on an insert. So yeah, that, that probably increased it a little. Okay, so um, number one, I uh, just I want to apologize. This video may be a bit buzzy sounding because the mount I'm using, uh, I think it's transmitting quite a bit of vibration to the phone. I can assure you this car is not as loud as the video makes it sound. I mean, I have a, a resonator delete stock mufflers on an aftermarket downpipe, and really, it's not loud at all. Um, but it does seem to buzz when I make the videos in the car. Also, driving in drive mode in a DSG, it's kind of upshifting quick, and I'm not going to say it's a lugging, but that tends to transmit more vibration. So just keep that in mind. Apologies. Um, lower control arms are next on the list, and the lower control arms were the uh, they have polyurethane bushings in them, the ones I have, and so. The stock bushings are rubber and they have voids in them, or at least the rear rearward kind of puck shape bushing does, which helps it move easier. So when you go to the polyurethane, it actually stiffens the suspension movement or the suspension to move the suspension probably takes a little more force. It definitely increases NVH. I noticed it right away. I said, wow, certain little hits and bumps are pretty noisy now. Lower control arms. So if you do those lower control arms, Keep that in mind again it's I don't think anything is terrible but it does increase it uh, the other one I kind of want to shoehorn in versus it's not a chassis or suspension mod but it actually is a big impact of how your car's ride quality is determined is tires so I'm on Michelin Pilot Sport all season four so it's a performance all season it's a pretty loud all season compared to like something more like a grand touring all season and uh, it's an 18 inch so the larger the wheel size uh, and the lower the aspect ratio, uh, the less spring you have basically in the tire. And so it's gonna increase the harshness of the ride. And you know, I could probably take my car and just put it on a 17 inch uh, basic Grand Touring all season and it would really soften the ride up. So keep that in mind, your tires are part of this equation and going up to maybe an 18 or 19 is gonna change it quite a bit over maybe like the factory 16s or what mine came with see on my list the last one is kind of the dog bone mount all the dog bone kit I did arm in uh, bushings upper and lower and inserts upper and lower yeah I mean that's a massive increase in NVH if you think about overstock um, hey a mark 8R that's a buddy of mine um, yeah so uh, that definitely increased NVH and that's one you read about the most is that you know oh my god I have a DSG I put it in reverse and it, my fillings all fell out of my mouth um, I wouldn't say it's nearly that severe but it's it's a big change um, install error happens when people do them and sometimes I think people aren't doing it right where um, 
that bolt through the bushings might be touching something metal in the chassis and that could be why but this one was installed correctly by my shop and it definitely when you let off the brake and those clutches engage with the DSG it is definitely going to uh, increase it's really a uh, vibration ah, I got a mark or sorry a b5 Passat behind me that lives in the apartments near me pretty cool car hopefully it passes me you can see it in the video uh, I have a b5 w8 so I always wave at this guy <laughs> so um, yeah dog bone mount for sure it's gonna increase NVH uh, what it also does is keeps the motor from rocking around when you let off the brakes uh, and the shifts happen so it's a trade-off you know I I like the race car part sometimes so uh, that one's worth it but it may not be worth it to you um, so that's basically my spiel on NVH we're gonna hit this uh, uneven pavement in a minute and you're gonna see this V5 uh, I just waved at him here so uh, let's see I need to get over here's a huge bump you can see catch air whoa <laughs> so yeah that, that's a big bump you can catch air almost um, I'm gonna try to snake in here hopefully this dude doesn't get pissed Okay, ready? So we're gonna go through this turn, and hopefully it can show you that the car kind of rocks back and forth pretty violently, actually. Ready? Don't know how they came out on the video, but that's about the best I can show it, where the kind of body rocks back and forth instead of the suspension moving independently. So that's it, that's my video. My rambling is over. Hopefully that gives you some idea uh, of NVH, but again, quickly, springs and V8s, it increases harshness. Uh, camber mounts, nothing. Uh, the kind I have, which use the stock mounts. Um, uh, front rear sway bars, rear not so much, front a lot of more jostling of the bot of the car. Dead set kit, rear inserts, yeah, maybe a little bit of buzz vibration. And the dog bone bounce, lots of everything, or not any harshness, but noise and vibration. So those things definitely, uh, you know, increase it here. Thank you.